today I have the infamous Ken Miller. What's up? How you doing, man? Good, man. I'm about to eat. We about, to, we about to bust down. I ate since lunch. Since lunch. I had rice for lunch. That's it. That's it. All right. I'm holding on for this. We're going to make it happen. All right. But before we do, we got to bless the food. All right, man. Go ahead. Uh, me? Yes. You really want my bless? I do it. All right. Bless it, baby. God bless the food by the receipt for nourish mind, body, and soul. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The one, the one they teach you when you're in kindergarten. No, that's that blessing you've been having. God is great. God is good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, so let's let the folks know what we got today. All right. We got some corn. We got a little lobster, shrimp, Dungeness crab, my favorite. Kim, what you got? I got steak. I got some wings. What flavor? We got teriyaki, um, the house wings. And then what are these? Look like mad crab savory. Mad crab savory. I like that. I like that. What's that garlic on them? Look like the season. Little garlic. Little I like garlic. That. Little that season. Good. Good. It's about to be right. I need some ranch though. You need some ranch? Yeah. The ranch. Thanks, Sam. All right. He was over there holding the ranch, ready to get in the carrot. Ready to get in there. So this right here, this is a little sauce that we call mad sauce. Got a little hot sauce, a little vinegar. A little mad crab savory and butter in it. And I haven't had this one. What's this? One? This one is, this is the one you have had actually. Okay. This is the mad crab savory. So since you haven't had yeah, that, we'll one. let you try that out. All right, well, let's get going, Ken. There's so many questions I want to ask, man. Man, I got so many answers. Listen, it is an honor to be sitting next to you, man. All right. The world's famous. Yeah, yeah, Kim I'm famous. Man. I'll be telling everybody, man. Thanks, you know, so man. Great. Tell people. So I, I gotta tell you my famous story. So I'm cutting grass, and my mama called me up. And my mama like, what you doing? I said, I'm cutting grass. She said, why you cut grass? You famous. Famous people don't cut grass. You need to hire somebody to cut your damn grass. <laughs> and I was like, I'm not, I'm, that, I'm like, oh, Orlando famous. Mom, I'm not, I can't cut my grass. Like, I'm married. You know what I mean? So I still gotta do housework. Not yet, mom. Yeah, I'm not yet. I still gotta do housework, oh, so. Yeah, but now I'm a comic, man. I, I've been doing comedy 13 years. Um, I started in Altamont Springs at the Why Not Lounge. I don't know if you remember Why Not Lounge. I don't know Why Not I started Lounge. there, and um, I went up. I took like 70 of my friends to the show, and I murdered it. Like one of the best sets ever. And the guy hosting it was like, you got to come back next week by yourself. And I came back by myself the next week and bombed for like five minutes. And he said, now you're ready to do this. And 13 years later, I got it. Are you making things happen? You making things happen? No. I did hear a few months ago that an original king of comedy Man. got your attention. Don't make me cry. You got, his, you got his attention. Don't make me cry. Tell us about that. So, I was at work. A friend of mine posted a video that he just entered the Steve Harvey comedy competition. And uh, so I said, I'm going to post my video. It had to be clean. So what I did was I sent it to my video guy. He had to edit all my cuss words out. You know, I say motherfucker. <laughs> Um, I don't even know if I can say that in this video, but if I do, just bleep it out. Because you know, motherfuckers are my cuss words. And uh, so he had to bleep out a bunch of cuss words. <laughs> he had to bleep out my cuss words. And so I submitted the video last minute. And I got an email from Steve Harvey's people saying, the video is good, we love it. The next day they put it up for everybody to start voting on. So for three weeks, I had people voting for this video. And I'm in New York. I land in New York, I'm doing a show in Albany. I land, I'm running late. I get to the air, I get to, I get to my hotel, I'm getting dressed. I'm trying to get to the show. And um, I had to go to Best Buy to buy something for my phone. I get a call from a comedian, Akeem Woods. He says, yo, you won. I said, won, what? He said, you won Steve Harvey. I said, what, how do you know? He said, dude, it's on Instagram. I look at the Instagram video of Steve Harvey said my name. He says, I know comedy when I see it, and this young man is a great comedian. I fell on the floor of Best Buy crying. I'm in the middle of Best Buy crying. Called my wife. I said, baby, we won. She said, won what? <laughs> I said, the Steve Harvey did. She started crying. So I run to the club. Now, mind you, they called me up to get on stage. So I'm running to the club to get on stage. 
I run on stage, I got tears in my eyes. I still got my jacket on because it's New York, it's cold. I do my set. I don't even remember what happened for 25 minutes. And I got done with the set. And I'm like, yo, man, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to set with y'all, but I just want to see Harvey come to this. Beat out a thousand comedians worldwide, and, and wow. Steve Harvey hit me like he hit me. It wasn't a the, the guy in Africa won the votes. Steve Harvey picked my video, and I won fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Oh, my family might be watching. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> can I borrow twenty five? I already spent it. Oh, it's gone. Oh, okay. I spent it on this food. Oh, my bad. <laughs> what the heck? And um. I get to go to L.A., be Steve Harvey, and uh, I get to do some touring around L.A., meet a talent agent, and Steve Harvey wants to do a um, tour with the top five comedians from the competition. Mm-hmm. So hopefully that'll start this year and not be out on the road. Well, you know what? Even though I'm always on the road. That's, and that's a big deal, man. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Congratulations. That's definitely a big deal. Oh, which one of these? Those are, that's the house song. Damn, damn, they good. I'm going to tell you something when you finish eating. I'm, I'm going to tell you something when you finish eating you want me to tell you right now. You eat honey mustard that you said. No! You eat. But it's good, man. Mm-hmm. But it don't look like honey mustard. It ain't yellow. That's because we know what we're doing here at the Mad Price. Well, so you people that trick you in the food. <laughs> I got a co-worker. He be making um, um, bagogi. And he'll make it with turkey. And not ground beef, but lying to you, it's ground beef. And it's so good, you're not going to eat like, yo, it's turkey meat. You done ate and it. And I ate it already, and I'd be mad because turkey meat is the worst. Yeah, because I don't eat turkey either, so I know how you feel. That was good, man. Mm-hmm. I like that. You like that one? So, Ken, you said you've been doing comedy for about how long? 13 years, let you know. 13. So, you've been heckled? Heckled? Um, I, I've been heckled, I've been booed. But I've been heckled, I've been, the crowd been quiet. I did a show, downtown Orlando, I auditioned with Def Jam. I was doing, I've been doing comedy three years. I auditioned with Def Jam. I shouldn't have been there, I honestly shouldn't have been there. And I get on stage and I'm bombing for seven minutes. It's like 200 people in there. They just said, uh, what's, what's the club downtown? It's tab- what's Taboo? I don't know what it's called now. But I remember Taboo. But I'm bombing. Jay Love was the host. Jay Love. I'm bombing so bad. Seven minutes hit, I'm still bombing, but I'm still trying to get a laugh. They play the music <laughs> to get me off stage. Jay Love came and, and danced my ass. <laughs> <laughs> danced me off stage. He did the uh, Sandman. Man, I go to the back club, and the guy that books Def Jam is like, man, you funny. You just ain't Def Jam funny. So I'm crying. Like, I cried at the show. And um, three days later, I went to a club. I did the exact same set and got a standing ovation. So comedy, you know, some rooms I love you. And then some rooms be like, man, get your ass off stage. It, it happens. How do you handle that? You just take the bomb and go do it somewhere else. Do it somewhere else. You just take the bomb and go somewhere else. But there's not me on this planet that's never had a bad set. Dave Spill just recently, his special was in Dallas for Detroit, one of them cities that got a D in it. And he bombed. And he talked about it. He said, man, look, I'm, I'm up here dying, yo. If you talking about, uh, you talking about he doing arenas and he's doing, you know, um, theaters. I'm just doing comedy club. He said, I, he said, I'm dying up here. Came back the next night. Exact same set and you kill. It's, 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 it's crazy. Like comedy's comedy's weird like that. That you can have a night where you you destroy the stage and then you can have a night with the exact same jokes. You ain't changing that. It's the same jokes. And you bomb. It happens. If you tell me a comedian out there ain't bombing, he ain't performing. How do you how do you deal with being a, a husband, a father? working a nine to five and a traveling comedian. How does that work for you? I take my wife on the road. You take on the road? I take on the road. Bang, bang, bang. <laughs> I, I take her with me. The funny thing is we always joke about it because um, she only gonna go to a certain place. She going to Miami, she going to DC, she going to LA, she going to Atlanta. She ain't going to Dayton, Ohio. 
Because she ain't going to Albany, New York. She ain't going nowhere cold. If it's cold, my wife staying out there. She ain't going. She said, I'm staying home. I'm not going. But I take on the road. As for the kids, I made a promise to myself in 2020 to make sure. Because I used to get them every other weekend. And, you know, during the week at school, they came straight to my house. Now I have to um, make sure I make it a point to where I get them more during the week and while I'm there to do comedy. You know, so you gotta be able to balance it. You gotta be able to, you gotta be able to, you know, make sure your wife or your the significant other, husband or whatever, is able to go with you on the road, so they know what you what you what the life is of a comedian. You gotta make sure you spend time with your kids. You know, I ain't the Kevin Hart status, but Kevin Hart. He'll, his kids got something, he'll fly back home for at least an hour or two to be a part of their graduation, a football game, whatever, and then he'll get back on the road. So I try to make sure when I'm home, I'm going to concerts, I'm going to, to spelling bees, whatever they got going on. And then when I'm on the road, I make sure as soon as my flight takes off, the first people I text, I text my wife, then I text my kids, I love y'all. As soon as I land, the first people I text, my wife and kids, I land and I'm here. So just being on the road, you got to make sure that you're in constant contact with everybody. So how often do you travel? Um, my best year, I was on the road 42 years. My best year. My worst year, since I've been doing comedy a lot, I was on the road 17 years. Right, that was the year Junior got sick. My son had the brain aneurysm. Oh, yeah. That was the year Junior yeah, got sick. And that was probably my slowest year because I stayed home to make sure he was good. So I didn't do comedy that much. But now I'm averaging about 25 to 30 weekends. But I have a regular job. Right. So I have to be able to balance the two. If you could compare your comedy style to any other comedian that's out there. Who would you compare it to? Man, that's hard to say because I don't want to say for Dave Chappelle because then people think I'm saying I'm Dave Chappelle. You know what I mean? And that's not what I mean by, I mean by the storytelling aspect of it. I'm a storyteller. I like, I like to take you on a journey with me. If you come see my set, from the time you walk in and see me, to the time I leave, you know everything about me. You know what I mean? You know that I'm a father of two and a half kids. You know I was divorced. You know I got remarried. You know I'm number eight of 11 kids. You know I grew up in a house where my mama didn't play. You know, I, I would tell the camera guy that I sell the shirts and I got a beat by a bag of flour. Because <laughs> my mama legit beat me with a bag of flour when I was a kid. Which, by the way, love, she loves that joke. She tells everybody, yeah, I whoop his ass, I show sure this. <laughs> So I'm more of a storyteller, so if you can think of a storyteller comic, I'm that, I'm that guy. I'm, I'm a comic that tells stories. Now, when I first started comic, comedy, I emulated Chris Rock because that's my favorite comedian. So I would pace on the stage. I would be going back and forth, and I would, you know, I would move like him. I would talk like him. I, would, I was loud, like Chris, Chris Rock loud. And as I got older and my knees got bad, I can't be walking because I'm on stage back and forth. I got to stand still. <laughs> I can't move. I got two bad knees, two both Achilles tendons. I got to stand still. So I, I would say Chappelle on the storytelling aspect of it, but I'm just me. I'm, I'm, I just kind of build my own lane and, and I talk about my life, my what I go through, what I've been through, what, what everybody's been through, which I think is the best comedy. Can I have a piece of your steak? Yeah. Look, it's just staring me in the face. And I gotta have some of it. That's why I try to steer most times comedians to, um, to storytelling. Because if I left you right now and I wrote a joke about me and you eat at the table eating chicken wings, people will laugh at that. Because guess what? Sometimes last week they might have ate chicken wings and they might have had the same, you know, story of it. But if you up there just doing jokey jokes and nobody can relate to what you're saying, it's a different, it's a different story for me. So I like to do it to where everything I do relates to, to what's going on with your audience. So when people leave, they're like, yo, man, you know my mama did the same thing to me when I was your age? And they understand, and that's what makes it funny too, because they can't get on stage and do comedy. 
So what they do is they let me tell that story for them. And I believe that that's one of the things that um, drew Steve Harvey to you. Uh, because I actually watched the video where he, where, where he won. I, I was watching him when he announced that you had won. And he was saying that you had the most relatable material out of thousands of people nationwide that... Thousands of them. Worldwide. 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 And, and, and people's hating too. So you know, Ken, I remember when I first met you. Where? You called me Mad Crap. And you was talking to me like you knew who I was. So I said, well, who is this? He said, you said, this the world's famous Ken Miller. Hey, man, everybody and look we are five years later with him. Everybody know me, man. Everybody know Ken. But yeah, every people's hating on the Steve Harvey thing. Like if you go to the Instagram post, it was people like, man, he ain't, he ain't that funny. I'm like, you had the fuck, you had <laughs> on anything. You know what I mean? Like, you, even like Thriller. Thriller got a hundred thousand thumbs down. Who the hell hate Thriller? Right. <laughs> it's the greatest video of all time. If people out there don't like Thriller. Like, that baffles me, man. The worst thing you can do is put, when you put the thumbs down on a video or you put the comment section, because then people come troll you. Like, it was a, it was a, a great moment for me. Now, as a human, of course, you're going to do love the love, but as a human, the, the hate part gets to you more. You can have a thousand people love that video, and with one person like he was corny, and that ruined your that, whole damn you day. Yeah. It ruined your whole day. Yeah. You know, it's a meme out there of a comedian on stage, and he's looking into the audience, and there's a hundred people in the audience, right, up top. The bottom meme says what a comedian sees, and it's the, they focus on the one dude that's like, 99 people having a great time, but it's one person that will ruin the whole night. You know what I mean? And that, that messed with me. And so in 2020, I made it to the point to where I wasn't gonna let none of the negativity bother me. I was gonna be like, look. So what I did was, I went back with five. Hey man, sorry you didn't like my comedy. Hope you make me laugh later, God bless you. I, I did that to every comment that somebody hated on. I went back like, hey, I ain't everybody a cup of tea. Hope make you laugh one of these days. God bless you. But people wanted me to come back. No, nah, cuz, I'm making come to your house and pop. pop. <laughs> That's what they want you to do. They do. They want you to come back with some men and when you're yeah. going back and forth with some negativity. You know what people did? They replied back, you know what? I, I, I mean, I liked you, but you know, I just thought somebody else should have won. I said, well, you could have said that. Like, hey, I thought you was funny, but my friend was funnier. I would have took that over. Man, he corny. I don't even know what he's saying. What are you talking about? I didn't joke about the tooth fairy. Who the hell don't know who the tooth fairy is? <laughs> right. I don't know what he's talking about. That's what the lady said. I don't know what he's talking about. Man, Mr. Tooth Fairy. Who don't know that you got kids? You know who the tooth fairy is. So, yeah, the hate part, it bothered me more than anything. And I learned that about making videos. I learned that about when I started making videos pretty well. You know, somebody would post that in the comment and I would delete it. And my boy was like, no, keep it, man. That, that'll fuel your fire. It's, everybody ain't gonna like what you do. And I post that video about Publix. Man, I thought the people was gonna kill me. The people, Floridians love Publix subs. Them subs out. <laughs> you ever taste that bread? <laughs> that bread terrible. I happen to be a, a, a lover of Publix Man, so. you crazy. That bread out. That bread terrible. You can use that bread as a chop, chop block. If your car about to roll backwards, Put a loaf of bread behind your car, it ain't going nowhere. That bread hard, man. I don't know how y'all eat that bread. I love it. Police beat up black people with that bread. <laughs> I can't play with you, King. For real. Mm -hmm. Go look at the Rocky King video. <laughs> Loaves of bread. Look at it. All public bread. <laughs> Got that name $55. Yeah? Now you're gonna make me look at the video. Go look at the video. Mm -hmm. Loaves of bread. <laughs> Plus, it's off, though. But one thing that I do know about you is you don't just make people laugh. you also involved in the community. Yeah, man, I'm trying to get in the heaven. So I see that you have, uh, over the past eight years, you've collected toys yes, for the Boys and Girls Club for girl Christmas. Girl. Yeah. About how many toys? I think we're up to 1,700 in eight years. 1,700 to 1,800 in eight years. Yeah, man, I'm wow. trying to get in heaven. 
Because I don't go to church as much as I should. They ain't gonna let you in with the word motherfucker. Nah, man, I don't know. It might be somebody. Okay, oh, now nah, you gonna know. <laughs> My wife don't like this girl from God. I leave that one alone. So you edit that out. <laughs> you cut that out. She don't pray when it comes to her Lord. <laughs> But now I, I started the um my toy drive when I was a kid. We had something in my neighborhood called the Empty Stocking Fund, where uh, rich people would bring toys to the hood, and it wasn't genuine to me. You know what I mean? When those people dropped those toys off of me, they they had to know stuff of it. So you know, this is in the mid '80s. You know, a family pulls up in a Mercedes Benz in the projects with some footballs and socks, you know what I mean, to get it to some poor kids. And I I just didn't, I mean, I appreciated what they did, but to me, they weren't genuine about it. And I said, whenever I get to a position where I can start giving stuff away, I would. So I, you know, I was running an open mic downtown, and I said, this is a great opportunity. So my first year, I got like 258 tours. And then after that, my goal was always 200 toys a night, and, or, or I mean, for Christmas. And uh, we got up to, uh, like I said, I think like 1,700 or 1,800 toys. And we've given them to the Boys and Girls Club. We've given them to a, a, a woman's a shelter for a battered women with kids. And this year, we actually get the toys away to um, families of post, the post files. Oh, okay. So we did them this year. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's my way into heaven. I get up there, and the guy was like, you ain't doing enough. I'm like, bro, you see them toys? Come on, let me in, play, boy. Y'all got all these toys, man? I'm gonna be mad if I get up there and I'm gonna come back and get these toys, I know that. Well, you just gonna put you at the end of the line and tell you your own. I don't like getting in the venture. Oh, okay. Oh. So, yeah, I've been doing that for eight years. Yeah. I also do, um, I'm trying to do a, a book, a book, a backpack drive next year. That's my plan. Um, my wife wants me to start getting more into mentoring young men. Um, so I need, I want to get into that. And, um, you know, just community stuff, man. You know, stuff that when I was a kid, I had, you know, we had, you know, in the hood, we always had the community center and the Boys and Girls Club, places we can go, you know, for, for a black man, a men are young, you know, older black men, a men are young black men, you know, I grew up without my dad. So you had to find somebody in the hood that, that was positive, that wasn't selling drugs or something, <laughs> that, you know, to mentor you. So I want to get into some mentorship as well. That's awesome. But you know where I'm trying to go. You know my heart player. <laughs> so Ken, before we finish up here, what you got going on? Any if anybody wanted to follow you, if they wanted to know what's going on with your shows, when you're having shows, where you at, what what would they do? How can they do that? Uh, you go on Instagram, which right now I'm blocked from I'm banned. I got a seven day ban. <laughs> racist word that I'm not supposed to call it. But I was in a private comedy group. I was in a private Facebook, but Facebook, you ain't damn I can't cut. <laughs> they put me in jail for something I said to a comedian in a private comedy group that I probably said a hundred times. And I got put in jail for 24 hours. So on Instagram, I downloaded this app because I had way too many, I was following way too many people who wasn't following me back. So I was going to unfollow everybody. But apparently you can't use these apps to unfollow people because Instagram think you're using it to get more followers. Right. I ain't know that, so I logged into it and then I went to like somebody's picture and they're like, you broke your Instagram rules, you have a seven day Instagram. And I was like, what rules? So I did it again and I did, I'm like, what's going on? And then I found out it's because I downloaded that app. Well, you going to jail down here. I don't think you don't give up. So when I'm back on Instagram, <laughs> my high school basketball number. Uh, on Twitter, Ken Miller 30. Uh, on Facebook, Ken Miller dash comedian. Um, don't send me a friend request. I got too many friends. Um, Y'all, this is our first video. That's why she ain't put her phone on silent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> your phone, you all, oh, I bet you terrible in the movies. We answer your phone and everything. Girl, hold up. Yeah, girl, Medea killed him. Look. Um, <laughs> Ken Miller Dash Comedian on Facebook. That's my fan page. 
But uh, and I interact with everybody. So you, if you hit me up, I interact with you. I post all my shows there, and also I got the hashtag Ken Miller Rants videos, uh, the videos I do in my car where um, I talk about random stuff that just pops in my head and I act up. Oh, I'm not. And that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, I'll make sure to put everything in the description below for Ken Miller. It's that good. It's good. But I'm full, man. I can't, I can't take them. When I was trying to eat, but I'm talking. At the same time, I just spit all in the dude's camera. He spit in the camera. I, I, seen, him, I the seen him brush the camera. I seen him brush the dude's camera. I seen him brush his bottom lip off. Nah, nah, <laughs> you eat that corn so much, you got the juice in your nose. I'm like, she got a book of it. It this corn. <laughs> I love corn, man. But I can't, I can't take it no more. I'm full. Fire. But I definitely want to thank you for coming man, through. I you, man. I'm the first one. I did well. Went well. Went well. All right, man. Well, I had the right person sitting next to me, man. Uh, you got me on the list. So you're going to have to come back and visit us. How about that? If don't be mad, I'm eating wings like this, I booze you, man. Well, I was bougie, too. I, I, I put that. some, I I put some gloves on some people be like that, I, I break mine apart and then dip That's some booze. That's booze right there. I went to all white high school. That's what that is. That's why. I can tell by your jokes. That's all white high school right there. Shout out to Grimsley High School. Well, I want to thank my Mad Crab family for tuning in with us for Mukbang Monday. So join us every Monday. We'll be shooting in a new video. And uh, good night. <laughs>